Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Dr. Nosa and I'm a GP registrar currently working in London. Welcome to my new subscribers. I'm so grateful to have you guys around and to my old subscribers, thank you guys for sticking around. I haven't posted in months and it's because I've had some, I've had a difficult year in terms of personal health stuff, family stuff, just a bunch of things I'd really like to talk to you guys about and share. I do like a life update video just to, just to help people because I feel like when you share things, whether good or bad, that can help people and that's why I created a YouTube channel in the first place. So definitely expect that video at some point in the future. The focus of today's video is going to be how much do us doctors in the UK earn? I know as a medical student, even before I applied to medical school, we heard all these things like, oh, doctors make so much money. I always wanted to know how much exactly am I going to be taking home after tax? Like how much is actually going to be going to my bank account? Because you hear people say, oh, I'm earning so, so, so amount every year. But then they don't tell you how much of that is going towards tax, like how much of that is going towards their pension. So it's very important. And that's why I want to focus on in this video is just to tell you how much are you going to be taking home a month, depending on what level of doctor you are. Just because you're in the same level as a fellow doctor doesn't mean you're going to be taking home the same amount of money. It really depends on a variety of factors I'll be sharing in this video today. So if you guys would like to see more, please keep watching. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you guys back for more videos. There's this preconception out there that doctors actually make a lot of money. At least back then, that was the understanding that doctors are taking, you know, raking in the cash, taking home loads of money. And in a way that's true, but also false. True if you're doing a lot of private work, locoming, which is also known as contracting. False if you're solely relying on your NHS salary. In the UK, the NHS is basically the National Health Service, it's basically free healthcare for everyone, for those of you not based in the UK. Just before I go into exact numbers, it's important you take note of the following points. Number one, doctors in London, just based on the fact that they are working in London, get an, around an extra £2,000 a year because London is believed to be more expensive than other parts of the UK. So just bear that in mind, whatever figures I'm going to be giving you in this video, just add an extra £2,000 a year to those figures because I'm not going to be including that in the numbers I'm going to be giving you in this video. The second point I wanted to make is that the salaries I've been mentioning in this video are assuming that the doctor is working full time. That is, you know, full days, nights, weekends. Not that you're working weekends all the time or nights all the time, but the point is that you're on a full rotor. So you're going to have weeks where you're doing night shifts. You're going to have weeks where you're doing weekends. You're going to have weeks when you're doing just long days, like a nine to five. But point of the matter is that these salaries I'm going to be giving you in this video are assuming that you're working full time. Obviously, if you're working part time, you're going to be earning less. My third point, especially for um, the UK grads, is that your salary is obviously going to be less um, if you're paying off your student loan. I think my colleagues paying off student loan, I think they were paying off around £200 a month. They're about two, three £300 a month. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Let us know in the comments, but that's what I was told by one of my colleagues. So again, if you're going to be paying student loan, you have to subtract around two, two to three hundred pounds from your salary every month from the figures I'm going to be telling you in this video. And my last point is that the salaries in this video, you can obviously boost the amount by doing locum work. Locuming for doctors is basically when you pick up extra shifts in the NHS. These shifts are available due to staff shortage. For example, people are sick, people are returning to leave for a variety of reasons there's not enough doctors on the ward. So basically, the hospital advertises for post, short-term post. It can literally just be for four hours, 12 hours, a month, a couple of months. It varies. But the point of the matter is that the hospital tends to pay more for these posts because obviously they're quite urgent requests. Because they're quite urgent, they tend to give fairly attractive offers to attract doctors to come and work those extra shifts. So now that I've told you all that information, let's get into the actual number, shall we? So let's start with full-time locum doctors. Salary for full-time locum doctors is going to be very variable depending on what level you are as a doctor. Obviously, an F2 doctor is going to be earning less per hour than a doctor that's at ST2 or 3. Let's give an example. Theoretically, if you're an ST1 doctor, most recently, um, the trust I used to work for was charging £45 per hour. £45 per hour, assuming you're working 40-hour weeks, is going to work out to be 18 hundred pounds a week that turns out to be seven thousand two hundred a month at that tax that will probably work out to around five thousand pounds a month so a doctor working as a full-time locum in an st1 post can be taking home five thousand pounds a month just by doing the regular 40 hour weeks so or 95 
The question is, despite the fact that locum jobs pay so much, why don't more doctors locum? Number one, some people just like security. They just want to know that, okay, I have this job throughout. I'm getting paid this amount. The thing with locum jobs is that because you're sort of like a contractor, sometimes there might be no jobs available for you to do. That's quite rare with the NHS, I must say. But sometimes there's no jobs for you to do. So some people don't like the idea of having to wait around for, you know, a job or urgent, you know, a shift to come on before they can be sure that they'll get paid that month. The other thing is, if you're locuming full time, there's no career progression for you. So you start, let's say you start locuming as an ST1 doctor. You're going to stay an ST1 doctor forever if you just keep locuming. People obviously want to progress to their career. And to me, it makes more sense if you want to locum full time to wait till you sort of get to a higher position um, before you start doing that full time. That way, you're sort of at the highest position you can be. And then you're now locuming and taking advantage of the situation and you're not really missing out on career progression. I hope that makes sense. Let's start with the most junior doctors Doctors that have just graduated medical school, the foundation year one doctors, they're known as in the UK. Per month after tax, F1 doctors should expect to take around 2,100 a month. This is assuming you're doing the regular, like, you know, like I said, full time, some night shifts, some long days, some weekends and all of that. If as an F1 you look up, it's usually only allowed in the trust you're already working because I guess it's assumed to be safer that you already, you know, know how things run in that trust. You can always know who to refer to for answers and things like that. So... Where I used to work before, F1 doctors were not allowed to look them outside the trust, only in the trust that you were working for. And they used to take about £28 per hour. Obviously, some places would be more, some places would be less. London tends to pay less in general than any other place in the UK, just because I guess London is more attractive for people and more people want to be in London. To even make the pay of doctors even more complicated, your pay can actually vary every four months. So when you're a doctor in training, like an F1 doctor, F2 um, ST1, all of that, um, you tend to rotate every four to six months depending on where you work. Like I said, an F1 doctor after tax can expect to take home £2,100 a month, right? But that can literally vary every four months. So if you're in a psychiatry um, job where you're just doing 95s, no on calls or anything, you'll be taking home a bit less than that. However, if you're in A&E, for example, you'll be taking home around £2,400 a month. It really depends on what rotation you're doing and that's why I keep emphasizing to you guys that just because two doctors for example are F1 doctors doesn't mean they're taking home the same pay. There's a lot of factors that affect that. I just wanted to clarify that fact to you guys because for example if you go on the BMA website they mention that the base pay of an F1 doctor is £28,000, £808 per year but this is not technically accurate as this tends to be more than this. Um, this this amount does not take into account the weekends, the night shifts and long days and they pay you extra for this. Next thing, foundation year two doctors, also known as F2 doctors. Take home pay after tax, you can expect around £2,400 a month on average. Remember my previous point stand, if you're doing locums more, if you're doing if you're part-time you're going to be taking less and all of that my previous trust used to pay around 40 pounds per hour for an f2 doctor so you know you can obviously boost your pay a lot with that st1 slash st2 doctors by the way guys if you guys don't know what all these titles mean i've got a video titled uk doctor titles to explain exactly what these doctors are i'll link it up here to go and watch to basically understand what all these titles I'm referring to are. ST1 and ST2 doctors end the same thing. It's the same thing as IMT and IMT2 doctors. On average, after tax, you can expect to take home just under £3,000 a month. Locum rates can vary a lot as well as with every other locum rate job, depending on how desperate they are. Like I said, I'm going off figures from my previous trust. They used to pay around £60 an hour for a ST1 or ST2 doctor or IMT slash IMT2 doctor. If you're doing like an a and &E job that involves a lot of nights and stuff, obviously as an ST1 or ST2 doctor, your pay can be around 3,000, just over 3,000 pounds a month, as opposed to being just under. ST3 to ST7 doctors can expect to take home around 3,500 pounds a month after tax. Locum rates again can vary, but in my previous trust, I definitely saw loads of adverts for ST7, ST3 doctors paying around 70 80 pounds per hour so yeah that's quite a bit and that's why i keep saying that if you want to make a bit of money as a doctor low coming is where you really need to be in terms of consultants for example one of my colleagues working in urgent care as a gp so she does night shifts and days and long days as well is earning around 115,000 pounds a month obviously consultants as well in the hospital 
can expect to take home their average salary is around hundred thousand pounds a month as well. So I think that's one thing that people don't realize is that actually a full time GP earns the same, if not more, than a hospital consultant. So do go into jobs for the right reasons, not because you think one is paying better than the other. Locum rates for consultants, let's just say £110 per hour is usually what um, is on the market. I remember in the UK there was this article that went, drove people ballistic. There was some GP in, in London, or not London, somewhere in the UK, that was taking home £700,000 a year. And people don't realise that obviously that's not the norm for most people. There are GPs taking home a lot of money because it's a business. And if you run that business well, you're going to make a lot of profit that you can share between the partners. It's really that simple. So those GPs making that kind of money are obviously not just working as doctors. They're sort of working as business owners, or should I say entrepreneurs and all of that. It's sort of like you're contracting to the NHS, NHS England. There are definitely GPs in London or in the UK that are cashing in working they're working their asses off as well um and you know it's important to realize that you're not going to make a lot of money if you're not working your ass off and it's really about that work-life balance more money more time with family it's really your choice as for hospital consultants obviously they too can cash in in the sense that like if they do a lot of private work a lot of these doctors are charging like 250 pounds 300 pounds even 350 at times for a 20 30 minute consultation so just imagine how much they can make from just a full day assuming that clinic is booked because if you do go private you're hoping that you're going to have a lot of patients wanting to see you so that's another risk they have to take but like i said a lot of them do part-time nhs work and part-time private work i hope this video was helpful for those of you guys wanting to know how much doctors earn the point is that the pay of doctors is very very variable depending on a lot of factors earnings at the early stages of your career is not that great compared to much later specialty you go into the, how much private work you do how much low coming you do would greatly affect your pay as well and i think the key here is that if you want to make a decent amount of money as a doctor you have to before you get to the point where you can actually do things privately if that's what you want to do you have to kind of keep your nhs job but also supplement your income with some low ships if you're thinking about going into medicine for the money, I hope this video set your expectations straight. You shouldn't be going into medicine for the money. I mean, have you guys seen how much investment bankers make or software engineers working in like the top, you know, FANG companies? So obviously don't go into medicine for money. It's not worth it. You have to spend how many years in university and just make sure you're going into it because you enjoy it. But I also believe that just because you enjoy something doesn't mean you should do it for peanuts. So make sure that you enjoy medicine but also make sure that you're working smartly as well thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments if you have any questions let me know if in the comments if you've actually missed any of my videos i would really appreciate it every time you're off youtube for a long period of time i think it just gets a bit nerve-wracking just coming back and it'll be nice to just hear from you guys in comments and yeah i'll see you guys in my next one bye